Welcome to our discussion on writing case law summaries. I'm Louis Podbielski. I spent 10 years at Tutor's Law Reporting Department and then four years with LexisNexis, totally immersed in their case law products. That was before we set up our own service, Spartan Case Law. Now, joining me on the video is Praneshan Pillay, who had such a good package of all-round experience at LexisNexis, especially on their legendary legal citata and various law reports, that two years ago we headhunted him to Spartan, and since he's joined us, we just have not looked back. And I am truly glad that you did, Louis. I've always been thrilled by South African case law. It's just so lively and intriguing. And the fact that I get to spend my working day diving into and summarizing cases for our subscribers is just the cherry on top of job satisfaction. And it's actually our subscribers that keep asking us how we manage to select and summarize 14 cases a day and write such good summaries, which got me thinking, we should do a video and share some of our trade secrets. No, I hear you, friend. You know, job satisfaction and passion for case law is key. <clears throat> I've been doing law reporting now for 17 years, and one would think I'd get uh, tired of it, but I don't. Every day is an adventure in case law. Each case is so different and so interesting, with different parties, facts, counsel, arguments, and particularly each judge's unique thinking and writing style. So actually our first step is choosing reportable cases, cases that are useful to our subscribers because they make new law, usefully settle a conflict between cases in a particular division, or maybe they're comparing cases differently across divisions, interpret legislation helpfully, or give us guidance on the uniform rules or procedure, or take our existing body of case law forward in some way. We package and deliver 14 cases a day to our subscribers at 6 a.m. sharp each morning in an interactive online experience. Lawyers are really busy, so they don't have time to read long and wordy summaries. Summarizing South African case law effectively is crucial for legal analysis and understanding. It's important to convey the crucial essence of a judgment without changing its meaning and context, which is why we use the FIRAC method and break the case up into neat and easy to read paragraphs that hits the sweet spot with our subscribers. And they're able to quickly read and understand the cases with their morning coffee. So what is the FIRAC method and how can you use it to draft professionally sound summaries? Let's take a deeper look. The first step is setting out the facts. In this step, you identify and summarize the relevant facts of the case. These include who, when, where, and what happened. The facts provide context for understanding the legal issue at hand. The second step is the issue. The issue statement is phrased as a question. What is the legal issue that needs to be resolved? It represents the the central question the judge is trying to answer in the case. This can provide a clear guideline as to the approach that may be followed by the court. The third step is the rule. In this step, we identify and explain the relevant legal rules or principles that apply to the issue. The rule is the legal principle created from the case and serves as precedent for future cases. The next step is analysis. This section involves analyzing how the facts relate to the rule. Parties present their arguments through lawyers, relying on expert witnesses, other cases, legislation, physical evidence, and even some journal articles. The final step is the conclusion. And the final outcome of the case is simply stated here. It includes who wins or loses, any legal costs awarded, and whether certain provisions are referred to a higher court for confirmation. Practicing this method makes the process so much easier, and when it's done correctly, it minimizes the risk of stating something not mentioned in the judgment or changing its meaning. Remember that summaries should be concise while capturing critical information. Stick to the core issues 
of the case and lean on the court's interpretation of law in analyzing the court's approach to those issues. From there, one can quickly ascertain relevance and discern if certain portions should be included in the final summary or not. And just as a side note, we may not always agree with the outcome of a judgment. However, it's not open to a reporter to convey his opinion on the case. An unbiased, natural approach to every case puts you in the best position to interpret and summarize a judgment effectively and coherently. Nice, spot on. <clears throat> you know, for us, the FURAC method is a winner. I've used all the kind of head note summaries that there are out there um, at Tutor and at Lexis on so many different law reports, like South African and a few of our neighboring countries. And this adapted FURAC method is the best because it's concise and we must cut out anything trite, cut out unnecessary detail and any discussion that's not core. And it's important that the components of your FIRAC form a coherent narrative so that the story starts with the facts, why and how it's at court, the core issues, and the main points and law discussed, and the key findings and then the order. There must be a clear and sequential line in the FIRAC story from the facts at the start to the order at the end. You know, we, we'd really try. We must never leave our reader puzzled or perplexed or wondering how you jump from one idea to another or where some character at, or party or some idea just suddenly popped up. I absolutely agree with you, Louis. It's so easy to write lots so that you think you've covered everything, but you need to really read and understand the case and own it. Decide what the important parts are and cut out anything tried and anything that is repetitive or not necessary for understanding your core fire act head note. And you must write for the reader who knows nothing about the case and who might be in a hurry or researching late at night. We've all been there. So be clear and concise and make sure your sentences flow in sequential logic and information so that you take your reader on a journey to fully understand the case. One could allude to a storytelling of the case in a sense. I do the hard work of unpacking the case and laying it out for our readers. The fire structure actually gives you the discipline and the method to write clear, concise law summaries. And we must never be wrong. You can never state something that is not in the judgment or say it with a different meaning. So always be careful to use the same words the judge uses and be very careful when you trim it that you retain exactly what the judge meant. Yeah, judgments, they can be really long. And some can cover a lot of facts and issues and discuss various areas of the law and legislation, the rules. And there can be all sorts of sort of ancillary challenges to locusts and um, they, they can stray and be distracting. But our jobs as law report editors is to identify the core story and issue and only pull out the important dictum and discussion. So how do you know what's important? You know, that, that is really tricky. And that comes from reading lots and lots of judgments. And we are lucky in this country. We have excellent writers on our bench. I, I highly recommend going every day and reading judgments on Safley's homepage. Those guys at Safley are amazing. That, that homepage, that landing page is where they upload the freshest cases. Like it's, it's live the whole day, they're adding stuff. And you can learn something from every judgment. And as a practitioner, there is no better reading material than judgments. It's not just to learn the law, but to see what tactics practitioners use and how the courts respond to those tactics and to see the latest trends in litigation. These cases are actually a lens into our society and economy and government. And, and when it comes down to it, it's into human nature too. Mm. And the other important part is the keywords, or also known as the fly notes. The fly note has two functions. One is an indexing tool to categorize the case into the body of case law that we have in our index. And secondly, it's a really condensed summary and snapshot of the case. 
So you can see in our index how we break up the law into main topics, subtopics, and third level topics. We consistently strive to maintain our existing index entries to prevent unnecessary clutter in the index. So take as one example, click labor, then the subscriber can see the second level headings. And in this case, I chose dismissal. And then I can browse and choose entries under dismissal. It's an extremely fast, efficient, and effective way of finding case law on topic. And we keep our fly notes concise for easy browsing. If you want to read the full summary, just click read full summary and the full FIRAC summary opens up for you to read. Then you can close it and continue browsing. Yeah, one important thing that's, that I always keep in mind is that the reader does not know anything about the case. So you have to set the stage, introduce the characters and explain everything in sequence. We want to take our reader through the FURAC paragraphs, and we always have to be clear and make each sentence follow logically from the previous one, and each paragraph flow coherently from the previous one. So each summary must be a complete legal story and a FURAC package. And that is exactly why, once I've completed a summary, I set it aside for a moment and later revisit it, adopting the perspective of a reader who's unfamiliar with the case. I then meticulously eliminate unnecessary words and remove any repetitive sentences that merely restate previously mentioned information in a different manner. With headnoting, less truly is more. It's a delicate balance between enough detail to make the summary understandable and precision and conciseness. Yeah, you know, our... South African case law <clears throat> is the most interesting and fast paced in the world. No other country sees issues like we do, and we see them on a daily basis. We have this constitution and the old Roman Dutch law and such societal and economic issues and the politics um, and, and our human rights issues. So at Spartan case law, we have settled on 14 cases a day. And it's actually only just enough for us to cover all the interesting topics and new law that comes out from all of these wonderful courts all across our country every day on just so many fascinating topics. So we package those cases into a very neat and interactive online experience. And we just love what we do. We love case law. We love choosing cases. We just love writing summaries and packaging them and presenting them uh, for our subscribers. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial video. We really hope that you guys found it informative and took something away from it that can help you in your daily lives. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.